two-factor authentication. And two-factor authentication is how we protect our account from anyone getting access to it, even if they do know our password. A second factor device could be a text message sent to your mobile phone. It could be you can get little USB keys that you plug into your computer and whatnot, or you can use a code generator app on your phone as well. So I'm gonna show you how to enable it on your individual account, because if you don't have this enabled right now, you must, 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 must do this. Enable it immediately. So I want you to do it with me if you haven't already done it. Let's go and I'll share my screen here and help you do it. But then I'm gonna show you how to actually enforce this across your company so you can get the whole business on board as well. So what we're gonna do, so go to account.google.com and then you go to the security tab on the left-hand side and you wanna look for two-step verification. It may ask you to re-sign in on a couple of your different devices like your iPad or something like that. But once you sign in once and you set up you know, the second factor authentication, it will remember you for like 30 days on each device. So it's very rare that you need to re-sign in. Might be a bit of a pain the first time, but you're not gonna have to do the text message thing every single time. This is mandatory. If it's not enabled right now, you must enable this right now. Please go and do it because 95% of the compromised accounts that we see inside the Google ecosystem are because someone didn't have two-step verification set up. If you're a concierge member, it should already be enforced for your domain. It should already be set up. We typically do that as a standard onboarding process. So once you've done that, I'm gonna assume that everyone's done that. We're gonna to go to our admin panel and we are going to enable this as a policy for everyone in the company. So it's pretty straightforward to do that. We open an admin panel, admin.google.com. We're gonna to go to security. We're gonna to go to authentication. And we're gonna to go to two-step verification. And this is the first one for you to check. Is this tick box ticked? Allow users to turn on two-step verification. And we have an enforcement option here, which we are going to enable. Now, if it's currently off, if it's currently not enforced, switch it on, but we're gonna switch it on from a certain date. And so I'd say probably give it, I don't know, two weeks from today. And that's gonna give you two weeks to send some communication out to the team. Just a quick email saying, hey, we've begun enforcement of two-factor authentication. Please make sure you sign up by going to account.google.com and the security tab, add your mobile number, and then set it up. You will need to do this in the next two weeks, otherwise you're gonna be locked out of your account. <laughs> and that's what happens. People get locked out of their account if they don't do it. They will no longer be allowed to sign into Google. And there's another cool feature here, new user enrollment period. I'm so glad they added this because in the past you would add a new user and they wouldn't meet the policy and so they would be locked out from day one. But you can give people like a grace period when they join the company and you issue a new account for how long they need to enable this for. So, I mean, our team are pretty strict, clearly. They're only giving people a day. But, you know, if you want, you can give people, I'd probably say the maximum would be one week to enable two-factor authentication on their account. They will get notified when they first sign in. Hey, your administrator has issued you a Google account, but you need to set up two-factor authentication and they can like, you know, skip or they or they can implement it immediately. You can choose different methods here. If you wanna use roll out security keys to your business and get really fancy about it, you can, but typically mobile phones are pretty darn safe. If, if two-step is already set up on various accounts already, that's fine. If we run the enforcement, all it's gonna do is enforce people who are not already enabled to enable it. It's just gonna go and check everyone and anyone who's not enabled, it's gonna send them a message that they need to enable it within a certain period of time. If you've got poor mobile signal, once you've set it up in your account, you can actually use a combination of text messages and the Google Authenticator app. There's a number of different authentication apps. You can use the Google one. There's another one called Authy. Authy is another cool one that like synchronizes to different devices. But yeah, once you've set up that code in the code repeating app for your second step verification, you can choose to use that or a text message when you sign into a new account. So you've got different options. And how do you see if staff have set up two-factor authentication? Now you can see that in the user accounts menu. I'm sure it's in reports as well, but I'm pretty sure it was important enough that they actually just put it in the users menu. You go to users, and then you click this little cog on the right hand side here, manage columns. And then you add the column two-step verification enrollment. And that'll tell you if they're enrolled or not enrolled. 
So there we go. Boot camp at IT Genius created one day ago, not enrolled, but yeah, everyone else, everyone else is enrolled. Okay, if you're still using like legacy applications that would just normally use your password, username and password in plain text, they don't have the second layer of authentication. So what you need to set up for those apps is a app password. So you can see here in my Google account, under my two-step verification settings, I've got this option for app passwords. And so if, if something that you're using right now stops working, like, I don't know, maybe you've got a multifunction scanner in your office, and an IT guy set it up to send emails from your email address, that's gonna stop working when you enforce this policy. So for that, you need to go into app passwords. And what that does is it's gonna allow me to generate an individual app password for a particular device. So you can see here, mail on my Mac. It, it gives you little prompts here to make it easy to remember which one's which. So there we go, we've got a password that's been generated and that's basically designed to be like a one-time password. So I can never retrieve that again. It shows up once and then it and then it disappears. I can never retrieve it again. But now I can delete it and then none of you can check my email with that password. Okay, if you've set up mailbox delegation for anyone who needs to access your email, there should be no other reason ever that someone needs to access your actual login to your account because then they have access to your drive, your calendar, your contacts and everything else. And so if each person has their own individual account inside Google Workspace, you set up your two-factor authentication for you and they set up their two-factor authentication for them on their individual accounts. Now remember that if you are the administrator, if you're the business owner or you know business leader, IT manager, you are the super administrator. You can always get access to someone's account if you need to, even without their phone. So you can reset their password, remove their mobile number from their account and get access to their account if you need to. So you always have an override if you're an administrator, if you need to override someone's account. Obviously your staff can't do that to you because you're the admin and they're not. So if you wanna delegate administration authority to someone else on the team, you can do that, but you wouldn't give the super administrator account to someone else unless they're a shareholder in the business or you trust them a lot. Okay, so let's go through adding a admin role to a user. So if you have a, someone in your company, maybe it's the HR manager or operations manager or office manager, and you want that person to be have the responsibility to add and remove staff, you know, instead of IT Genius doing it, you want them to have the, or maybe you want them to have the ability to reset passwords for your staff if your staff forget their password or they lock themselves out of their account. Might be useful for you not to be the person doing that all the time. So you'll see here that we have, you know, obviously users and groups. Inside users, we actually have something called administration roles. And you can go in and customize these if you want, but we just need to stick with the basic roles. We don't need to customize them. I'm gonna open up a test account here. You're gonna open up a user account. And then you can see here two-step verification off, naughty, naughty. But we're gonna to go to admin roles and privileges. And we're gonna assign an administration role. Now, super admin can do everything, kick you out, whatever they want, but let's just make them a user manager. And if they're responsible for onboarding staff, you would probably make them a groups admin as well. So they can add users to groups or update and modify groups. Actually, I've got a feeling if you just need someone to literally add users and then put them in the right group, I've got a feeling you can do that just with the user management role. There's a few other roles here. You can look up the help guides to see what they do. The help desk admin allows people to reset other people's passwords. So if you just literally want people to be able to reset passwords but not really do much else, you can use the help desk admin role. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. If you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack, or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.